welcome to Tea with Sam and HG. On this occasion, we're going to be talking about do we need narcissists? But before Sam and I get into that interesting topic, first of all, the important business of what tea is it that we are drinking? And at my end, although you can't see it, you may be able to hear it. There we are. It's my Fortnum & Mason Royal Blend Tea, which is Pico from Sri Lanka, which apparently uplifts the Maltia Assam to create a very traditional cup of tea. And it was first blended for King Edward in 1902, hence Royal Blend. And uh, apparently it's popular for having a smooth, honey-like flavour, a little bit like me, really, I would suspect. <laughs> Naturally, with that introduction out of the way, I'm going to ask Sam to tell us what she's drinking and also just to talk a little bit about her role in what we're doing here before we get down to the topic. So good morning to you, Sam. What are you drinking? Good morning to you, HG. Um, well, I'm uh, at home today. So last time we did the interview, I was at a friend's house. I've actually got my best mug out for you. Uh, and um, I've just got a cup of builder's tea, I'm afraid, but it is made with proper tea leaves. So, but they're not, they're not as fancy as your ones. They're from the co-op, but you know, that's all you can get around here. <laughs> Fair enough. From, from, from the coop, did you get your, uh, so uh, will you read the tea leaves at the end of uh, finishing your brew? Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I will see what my future holds. See what the future holds. Uh, yeah. among some murky brown lumps can take the bottom <laughs> of your mug. And a delightful mug it is too, glinting and wear, all shiny and inviting. Again, just like me. But <laughs> let's not talk about me for a moment. Let's talk about you. And tell me a bit about how your role in all of this. Yes, brilliant. Well, um, yeah, because the last time we had a chat, you asked me to, to share about myself and all I did was just, yeah, I didn't really say very much. So um, why am I doing this and why am I here? Well, firstly, obviously, we have been in contact with each other. I contacted you about six years ago to help me with um, the narcissist in question at the time. And then since then, we've gone on to have much more conversations. And this conversation has arisen because, um, well... We thought it would be a good idea. We don't think this has been done before where there's uh, the conversation between a narcissist and an empath taking place, you know, in, in live and real time. And the reason I thought very hard about whether this was, um, you know, a sensible thing to do, because obviously for people watching at home, you know, don't try this at home. It's not, um, you know, you have to be no contact with no narcissists in your life. And so I wouldn't want anyone to think that I was playing with fire, as it were, by um, engaging in these conversations with you. But this is just such an amazing opportunity. Um, I'm an actress. I've been um, in that business for a long time. And in my business and career, I've also come across various narcissists. So it's not just romantic narcissistic relationships that I've experienced. I've experienced it in many different areas of my life. And HG, you've been an amazing source of, um, well, you've just really helped me with lots of different situations that I've experienced. Um, something that's really important for me is that, I don't know, something that I've realized through my experiences of narcissistic abuse is what it's really shown and taught me about myself and how I could use the experiences as something which um, could actually help me transform other parts of my life. So that's kind of why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. I think this conversation and the information that you share and that we can discuss together can really, um, I don't know, shine a light on some of this stuff. This subject needs to be taken out of the shadows. It needs to be um, talked about in a really honest and open and vulnerable way. And that's why I'm here. I want to share the, the perspective from the empath. I don't speak for all empaths. I can only speak for myself. And I think perhaps the kind of empath that I am, as we've discovered through working through your um, uh, your empath detector, I'm probably not the type of empath that has experienced the very deeper, darker aspects of narcissistic abuse. Mm -hmm. I'm one that will draw a line in the sand a bit sooner. So I wouldn't want to put myself out there as, as speaking for all empaths, but I can speak for myself and what I've learned through these interactions. I actually see them as a gift. And so maybe that leads into the conversation that we're going to talk about today, which is, do we need narcissists? <laughs> well, thank you for all of that. And it's uh, very important, of course, to have your perspective on this, not only in terms of an empath's perspective to the topics that we're talking about, but also it'll enable some people to gain that validation as they listen to what you have to say. And I'll go, yes. I recognize that and that was how I felt about it. Or other individuals may say, no, that didn't quite happen for me, but interesting to understand uh, what you have to say about it and it gives them 
pause for consideration. So as you've just touched on, of course, that the narcissist enabled you to learn about yourself. And why don't we start there in terms of the question of do we need narcissists? Now, of course, as you know from my work, I divide people up for the purpose of understanding it within the world of narcissism into narcissists, my group, empaths, your group, normals, which is the largest group, and narcissistic people who aren't narcissists. And as I've explained on many occasions, all of those individuals can engage in similar behaviours, but have different drivers behind those behaviours. And therefore, it might be said, well, if they can all engage in similar behaviours, do we really need narcissists at all? Can not the empaths and the narcissistic people and the normals do whatever humanity requires? And therefore, might one suggest that the narcissist is superfluous, that is extraneous to what human beings need. Now, it won't surprise you to learn that I will, of course, put forward the argument that narcissists are very much needed by humanity. Otherwise, I'd be doing myself out of a job. But first of all, let's touch on the point that you made about the narcissist teaching you as an empath about yourself. Uh, do you see that as something that is absolutely necessary for you to learn? Well, it's a really difficult one to answer because um, what I've kind of discovered through my journey of, I guess, recovery from waking up to this this thing, which is, for me, it's so much more than just one individual person. It's like it's pervasive throughout the whole of society. And so perhaps the, the traits and the woundings or the vulnerabilities that I have wouldn't exist if I hadn't experienced it in my younger life in some way. So it's hard to say, but what that particular one that I initially came to you about what that was like a huge wake up call to me about you know where I wasn't showing up within my power within my own life and where I was I guess out of alignment because I had to eventually really look at why I was engaging in this dynamic with this man and why I was allowing certain things to happen and that I could only point it back to myself and go well if I am um you know, what, why was it that I want, what was it that I wanted from him? You did a really amazing um, blog ages ago when I first was reading your stuff where it was like, who is using who here? Who mm. is using who? And I remember reading that and it was a bit of a, it was hard to read it because I had to kind of look within myself and go, you know, I wasn't using this man consciously in any way, shape or form, but I was attracted to his power and to his status. So what is it within me that wants to do that? I can't point my finger at him and blame him for that because that was something that I did. I chose it for myself. So that's one very small thing that I learned from it, but it just showed me where I hand my power away, where I don't honor myself, where I allow people to walk all over me, where I perhaps want to please and fawn and be a people pleaser, you know, even... In this dynamic, sometimes I can feel like I want to fawn and please you because, you know, I can, this dynamic is playing out even now. It's like a part is so inbred in me to want mm -hmm. to be like this. And so what is this teaching me and showing me about myself? And ultimately, I was able to clear a lot of trauma that was probably already in me as a consequence of the abuse from that man, which then enabled me to move forward in my life in a way which was actually way more, I don't know, I guess powerful for want of a better word, but more empowered. So I saw that as an opportunity for me to kind of sort some of my shit out, basically. Okay. Let me pose this question then. Yeah. In terms of gaining an understanding about who you are, what makes you tick, yeah. what your strengths are, what your vulnerabilities might be, Yeah. do you think the interaction with the narcissist enables a better understanding of that than that which would have been obtained if you hadn't had an involvement with a narcissist? In other words, could you have learned all of those things from your interactions with non-narcissists? I don't think I could, actually, no. Okay. I don't think I could, because th because what a, a narcissist is brilliant at doing is mm -hmm. targeting you through your wounds and your vulnerabilities. And okay. so a lot of that stuff, wouldn't somebody wouldn't want to prod and poke about at that stuff if they were an empath, or they wouldn't want to um, trigger those wounded parts of you. You know, you're talking about Harry's... Harry's wife targeting the the wound of Harry with his mother. You know, yeah. a normal person or a non wouldn't want to do that. But there's an opportunity for the, him there to maybe really address that in a much more meaningful way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair, fair enough. Given then that you see that it would be advantageous to understand yourself better because the narcissist probes you and takes advantage of those existing vulnerabilities. Do you think the price however for that accumulation of knowledge is worth paying in terms of the dance that you do with the narcissist and everything that comes with it 
No, not necessarily. And that's why education around it is so important because as this subject and these traits and these manipulations and this whole thing becomes out of the shadows and we all start to see it a lot more clearly, then mm -hmm. the opportunity is there for people to remove themselves a lot quicker with the help of your work, you know, with understanding about it. We don't need to go to the extreme depths of, of where this abuse can take somebody because okay. the, the understanding around it is there now. We can get out a lot quicker. But I know for myself, I, I had to experience it in a really dark way for me to wake up because I was unconscious to what was really going on, if that makes any sort of sense. OK, then let me offer this. You have a choice. You yeah. can learn all about yourself and just gain a deeper understanding of Sam, uh, recognise who you are, what makes you tick. But you have to go through the, the dance with the narcissist and all that comes with it. Or you can not know as much about yourself, but not be abused. Which would you choose? Um, I'm probably going to say something quite controversial. I'm grateful for what I experienced in my particular experience. And that might be a controversial thing to say. And I'm not saying that everybody should feel grateful. That's maybe not the right word for, the, for any abuse that they experience, because it's never your fault. And it's not something that any of us want. But for me personally, I'm grateful for that experience because it woke me up, not just to my own stuff within that dynamic, but to so much stuff that was happening just in life in general. It just woke me up. It woke mm -hmm. me up out of my own consciousness. But I'm not suggesting that we go seeking out abusive situations. Mm -hmm. Learn these lessons, absolutely not. And I think once you learn those lessons, you then have to take what you've learned and then apply it to your life in a really meaningful way. Um, I'm not suggesting that anyone seek out abusive situations. And I, no. I wouldn't choose it anymore for myself, but that experience in itself did bring me, I believe, many gifts. I often uh, explain to people that you ought not to show any gratitude towards the narcissist for yeah. or having enabled you to receive this enlightenment, because of course, that forms a connection still between you and the narcissist and there's a breach of you no know, contact. But in the sense of answering the question, do we need narcissists? It would seem that you would answer that on a personal level to understand more about yourself then the answer would be yes yeah and it, it, to be honest it's not even like I'm grateful to him specifically I'm grateful for the experience it wasn't just like what I learned through the interaction with him it was how I dealt with the people around it you know the whole because I experienced it in a kind of group I don't want to use the word cult because it's not a cult but it was like a group community sort of setting I also learned about sticking up for myself about how to deal with smear campaigns all of these things about how to just deal with people in general it, it wasn't just the interaction with him it was the whole experience afforded me the opportunity to just really step up within my own self um I had to otherwise I would have just re remained in victimhood and it is important to expect you know we can't spiritually bypass all the pain and the suffering that goes with that but ultimately where it's brought me to now like six or seven years later I wouldn't have missed that experience for the world because it's made me the woman that I am now um, and so it was only through understanding it. And, and I'm also fascinated by the subject. I'm, I, I would not have wanted to remain in ignorance about this whole subject mm -hmm. and this whole part of humanity. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful isn't the right word, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the experience for my, for, my, for my good rather than see it as a bad thing and then remain in a state of victimhood about it forever because that's not good to anybody, is it? Okay. Then envisage this for a moment. There is a world where narcissists don't exist mm. and have never existed. Contain your grief at the loss of me. Uh, you can sob gently later. But if you would, just if you imagine, what would you see a world looking like if narcissists never existed and there never will exist? Well, give me your thoughts just off the top of your head. As what does that world look like to you? Well, I guess there's some kind of, um, that's like a kind of utopian sort of, you know, but, and, and I guess it sounds like it would be nice and beautiful and bliss, blissful, but what I would say is what the element of narcissism and I guess psychopathy brings into the, the stream of human, of, of the, the of, is excitement and, you know, the thing of pushing things forward, risk, to, it's the risk taking element, I think, of narcissism, which really kind of drives things forward within our society, sometimes for the detriment, but sometimes 
for the better. Think of all those thrilling experiences. Think of, you know, if we didn't have people like Marlon Brando, like entertaining, you know, he was a horrible abuser in his personal life, but he was also a staunch advocator of civil rights and stood up for indigenous people and was just like an, an incredible performer who, you know, sends thrills through, through people, you know, it's, I don't know. I think the world you're, would be- you're, you're not a narcissist, but you've taken risks in your life, haven't you? That's very true. I am quite, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. So, so we don't need narcissism. Well, I don't know. I don't know, HD. What do you think? Tell me what you think. Well, I, I'm, that's why I'm interested in uh, drawing the views out of the empath as to <laughs> one thing. Uh, l then let's look at, let's envisage a world without narcissists, first of all. You're less likely to have conflict, but it won't go away because normals and narcissistic people will engage in conflict, not on the scale that narcissists would do so. They're more amenable to seeing somebody else's point of view. But normals don't tend to have emotional empathy for people that they don't know. So you would still have, for instance, trolling going on online, maybe not as uh, nasty as it can be when a narcissist gets involved, but it still happens. I've explained in the video, the online troll, that, narciss that trolling comes from both narcissists and normals and narcissistic people so you would still get that because there has to be doesn't there, amongst non-narcissists a healthy regard for some degree of selfishness some degree of pride some degree of ego because if you didn't have all of those things then you basically wouldn't function in a way that would allow your survival or thriving because you'd give up your assets to other people basically your house would have 50 immigrants living in there who said come and take all of my resources and come and live with me and you'd give everything away because you don't look out out for yourself you'd be too selfless but there will still be individuals so i don't think you'd see that there would be this complete utopia because there would still be individuals that would compete with one another and remember let's take for example that a resource becomes scarce in a particular area that means that those individuals' emotional empathy for those that have that resource would be reduced by the scarcity that could cause them to behave in a rather unpleasant manner to lay their hands on their resources. If it's a matter of life and death, they don't have water. The people across the way have water. Let's We will go and invade them and take their water because we need it. Otherwise, we'll die. And those individuals, of course, um, aren't narcissists, but their emotional empathy would be reduced. So... You wouldn't, to my mind, be left with any form of utopia because human nature is such that emotional empathy isn't a fixed thing. It ebbs and flows dependent on circumstance. Narcissistic traits prevail. What you would have is a greater opportunity, I would see, to prevent problems in the first place because people wouldn't be adopting entrenched positions from the very beginning because they don't have that pathological mindset. So there'd be a greater chance to discuss matters and try and reach an accommodation by understanding one another because normal people are capable of doing that. So it's often the case that people say that person who's an online troll, they wouldn't behave like that if they were in person with that individual because when they're face to face, their emotional empathy is more active because they can see that person and it's a face to the name and so on and so forth. So you'd have more opportunity to reconcile differences in a meaningful way, rather than, of course, as you know, with the narcissist, where it is that fixed need for control. So I don't see that there would be this utopian situation if narcissists uh, were omitted, but you would have less conflict as a whole. You would have less achievement, although it would still be there, of course, because empathic people and normal people and narcissistic people will still want to achieve. They have the capability for the creation of great works. But I think what you would end up missing is the fact that, as Oscar Wilde said, to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. And that self-love that the narcissist has perpetuates the narcissist in so many ways and translates into all of those aspects that are the determinants that requirement for excessive admiration, that preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success and power and brilliance and beauty, uh, the belief of being special, 
um, a boldness, a confidence, a necessity of achieving power. All of those things drive those particular humans, and I would suggest, to a far greater degree than any other categorization of person to make those achievements. So those leaders, those military leaders that we've had through history, if you're on their side, amazing. They would go and conquer Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Charlemagne, the way that Elizabeth I repelled the, the Spaniards, etc. Napoleon, sure, he created terrible conditions throughout Europe for many people, but for but for those that were on his side, he extended the, the Republic. And what did they also bring? They brought uh, tactics that would be used. Because even if Narcissus didn't exist, you wouldn't er eradicate conflict as a whole. It would still exist for the reasons that I articulated earlier. And so these brilliant military tacticians wouldn't have occurred. And therefore, you wouldn't be able to admire the achievements they did in commanding all of these troops. The captains of industry, J. Paul Getty, John D. Rockefeller, Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, just a handful of names, and think about all of the jobs that they've created. Of course, there are plenty of people who complain about the wealth that they hoard for themselves, but are they not entitled to that as a consequence of the endeavours that they've and the risks that they've taken? Uh, the tech entrepreneurs that are narcissists, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, you know, I'm talking to you and using one of Jobs' devices. Me too. Uh, there we are. So the influence that he has. And that's just amongst leaders and captains of industry and tech entrepreneurs. Think about as well that the entertainment and joy and delight that is brought yeah. into people's, the fact that people enjoy going and watching films about romantic love, and romantic love is, of course, the narcissistic uh, representation of it. It isn't genuine love. So when people go and enjoy Pretty Woman, for example, all of that is a narcissistic reputation, you know, the white knight riding in and saving the tart with a golden heart and all, all of that kind of stuff. And, of course, in your profession, if we didn't have narcissists and you having your strong narcissistic traits as an actress yourself, then all of those performers... Of course, there are many actors and actresses that aren't narcissists, but loads who are <laughs> loads that are absolutely. You know better than better than yeah, most. Yeah, sure do. But, uh, yeah, but the point is, they are driven by that need for admiration, so they'll get up on that stage. You know, many people go, oh, "I feel a bit silly." You know, I wouldn't want to do that. The fact that their chameleon-like powers enable them to take on these different roles because they are actors in their daily lives, so they they basically monetize what they're doing, and why not? You know, the likes of Elizabeth Taylor, Kevin Spacey, Audrey Hepburn, yeah. Angelina Jolie. Marlon uh, Brando. <laughs> Marlon Brando, as you mentioned, Tilda Swinton. All of those uh, are individuals that have utilized their narcissism in a way that has created fantastic screen performances and, and memorable on-screen presences. Yeah. And then the pop and the rock stars. You know, Elton John, Madonna, David Bowie, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Even J-Lo, even Jen Jenny from the blog. Think about how much joy and entertainment they bring into people's lives because they want to be seen. They want to be admired. They have to be admired. Yeah. They have to be on that stage drinking in all of that delicious fuel from the thousands. You know, Mariah Carey with her diva-like ways, which not only do people enjoy her performances, but they're also intrigued and fascinated by that, the lifestyle, the riders that are issued. Yeah, well, that's why I was talking about Marlon Brando earlier, because, you know, I was listening to um, there's this program called Evil Genius where they take people from history and they go, were they evil or were they a genius? And, you know, as we know, quite a lot of the people <laughs> that are geniuses have, you know, are, are potentially on that spectrum of narcissism. So even if they look like they were a really good person, like Mother Teresa, perhaps there was, you know, some elements within them which weren't so squeaky clean. And so it dissects that stuff. And they did a brilliant one on Marlon Brando. And they were saying, like, you know, it's it wasn't just like the work that he was doing it was like his whole persona and how he held himself apparently he turned up on the apocalypse now set and hadn't even read the script <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just like the kind of the coolness and the kind of the, the arrogance almost but also that was just the way that he worked he was maverick yep. in what he was doing and he took those risks and he didn't behave how he was supposed to behave and you've got to admire it like you've just I, I just have to admire that stuff and even though he might have been an absolute whatever to the you know to the women in his life he still was this amazing man who pushed things forward in in, in terms of how he worked and all this kind of stuff and you just go 
we wouldn't have that if we didn't have narcissism and so to me that's yeah it's uh and that brings us to an essential point with narcissism one that i've advanced before that with many narcissists that create these fantastic companies that then generate uh, goods and services that improve the human condition the performers but you know in sport the artists the authors the screenwriters you know where would we be without charles dickens work and um the actors the actresses etc all of that uh provides people with entertainment and joy and stimulation and if you're just watching that performance or purchasing that iMac or reading that book you don't suffer the downside of that narcissist behavior but someone somewhere will be as you know from my work there'll be an intimate partner primary source who's being devalued there will be staff and employees who were rounded on and sacked and belittled and called bad names there'll be family members who will be ostracized but millions upon millions of people have an improved uh, quality of life because of the products and services that are created by narcissists uh, again i underline that not everything is done by narcissists i make that clear but we are overrepresented in in these achievements and the distraction from the daily grind of life through the creation of entertainment is invariably the preserve of many of our kind but somewhere somewhere so, someone has to suffer because they always do with us now the quick the, the big question is is it worth it to your mind is it a fair trade off that millions benefit from watching a narcissist on screen but you know that his wife is having a miserable time of it and his kids are being left behind and he's an absolute grade a arsehole to his family so there's a handful of people who are suffering is it worth it again it's like very difficult to answer that question isn't it because like there's there's different levels of all of this stuff i mean like for me if i look at someone like jimmy savile for instance who was um, obviously in his day was highly regarded as like a national treasure of, of Great Britain, you know, and he mm -hmm. was horrible, probably quite sadistic, paedophile, abusing mm -hmm. children and women, you know, like for me, like there's a line, I cannot endorse or watch or engage in anything to do with that man because his particular flavor of his, well, is he a narcissist? Is he a psychopath? Have you got any thoughts on that? Well, without delving too deep into what Savile might be, and he's a narcissistic psychopath, and I won't say any more than that because I might do a series about him. Yes, I thought you might. Yeah. Um, naturally, you're gravitating there to thinking about the victims. But again, I'll pose the question. You, you, you've chosen Savile. I'll pose the question again. He entertained millions of people despite yeah. engaging in what have come to light as most reprehensible behaviours. Was it worth having him on the screen entertaining all of those people? I would say in his case, no. Because okay. for me, I don't kind of respond to him as a performer. But where it where it becomes difficult and some objective is, you know, there, I, I suppose there is I don't know, like are there varying are there varying well, let's, levels take, of, let's take of Kevin user. Spacey. Let's take Kevin Spacey. Fantastic yeah. actor, uh, brilliant in the usual suspects, fantastic in House of Cards, uh, great actor to watch. Um, but has faced accusations of uh, sexual assault yeah. and uh, deemed to be an unpleasant individual in, in that regard. So then again, it, you, de you determine that Savile isn't somebody that you would, so you would delete him from the face of the earth. And in effect, what about Spacey? Yeah, you see, this is where it gets a bit more tricky. I guess, I suppose where I'm at in my own life and just, when I, when I realize, when I hear about stuff, obviously we're hearing through things through our media, which isn't always, well, it's very rarely to be trusted in all honesty, really, about what we get told about things. Although, you know, there is, yeah, there's plenty of evidence to back up. Um, I, I have no doubt that he has been a, an abuser. He is an abuser and a narcissist. And so I guess for me, I just, it's difficult to watch anything, isn't it, without, um, recognizing that you know the music that you're listening to the people that we're watching you know that there is a lot of this stuff within it what do we do do we completely disengage from all of it or can we separate the art form out from the person and I, I, I don't know I can't I can't give you a strong answer on that one because I guess from my own 
probably quite naive perspective, there are people that I can forgive a bit more than others, depending wow. on what wow. their level of abuse is, as opposed to, and, and what their level of talent is. Isn't that awful? I'm just being honest. I don't know how else to answer that. Well, no, that's part of the reason why I want to pose the question to receive an empathic view. My view is a quite simple one. It's a utilitarian view that notwithstanding what that person might have done, if they have brought, if they have brought entertainment to many, many new people, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be held to account for their uh, crimes. But the simple fact is, is that if we're asking a question of should that person have been allowed to exist, you would on a simple trade off of saying, well, that person has entertained millions and a handful of people have suffered. Logically, you would say, well, you'd allow them to have existed because they brought more joy to more people than they did harm to a small number. Now, for instance, uh, and the age of thing, you know, if you uh, were able to time travel and you found Hitler as a baby, yeah, would you kill him knowing what he would go on and do? And the point there is that you would probably have little hesitation in doing it because you think, well, what joy did he bring? He didn't. He didn't entertain people. He might have been seen as a saviour of the Germans. But beyond that, he caused a lot of problems for a great number of people. So in that instance, you would say, well, that's a narcissist that we didn't need. So he could be struck off. But the point is, is that with many narcissists, indeed, the vast majority of narcissists don't actually impact upon the world in a global way of, say, Hitler did. There are notable examples of other ones that did, and uh, it's easy to identify them. But as against the number of narcissists that exist, the vast majority are either individuals who don't cause anything on the world stage at all and cause a problem for a small group of people around them, to which you would then say, well, we don't need those individuals, do we? Because all they do is fuck up people's relationships, fuck up people's working lives and so forth. Let's get rid of them. So on a personal scale, but I can see that you're going to perhaps take a contrary position there. Well, this is kind of brings me back to what I was saying earlier. It's like, you know, in my own individual um, interactions with people, I mean, I guess it, maybe it's just the, the way that I am as a, as a, as a, as a, as a woman like, or as a human being. Like, I will always try and find what my part in something is and, and try and understand what's going on for that other person. And then so what can I learn from this? What, what, what can I, what can I do with this instead of just kind of staying, you know, obviously if it's, if it's just, now I understand about how narcissism works. For the most part, I just learn not to take it personally and just go, that's not my stuff. That's them. But what is it within me that if I want to carry on and engaging with it, that's, that's something in me that I can look at. And so whilst I'm not saying, you know, everyone is a human being and everyone you know adult people who are narcissists who are acting out this behavior they i believe at some point have been a victim otherwise they wouldn't have ended up with narcissism as you say in through mm -hmm. your work it's a it's a genetic predisposition plus an out of control environment so who am i to judge like what their journey has been and what has created this 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 well, in their adulthood like i don't i can't i don't feel like i can judge it and demonize people like that I've just reached a point where I go, I just don't have to take it on myself. I can recognize it and walk away and and maybe use something that that dynamic, that interaction has shown me about myself to actually empower myself or grow in some way. So that's where I've arrived at. And I don't think we should kind of demonize or get rid of anyone. OK. Apart from Jimmy well, Sapp. <laughs> well, indeed. I understand your position from an empathic uh, position. And it's interesting as well to see how that's, swayed by your emotions, as I take a much more evidence-based approach, almost like a set of scales, that does this person bring, what do they bring to the party, in effect? Yeah. So if you've got Joe Scumbag, who just regularly beats up his partners, ponces off the state, that's it. Eradicate them. That narcissist serves no purpose. Whereas Jane Glamour, who entertains millions of people around the world with her brilliant singing and songwriting skills, and then moves into acting as well, uh, causing joy to many people who go and watch her films. But of course, she's an absolute demon to live with, a string of divorces and children that are shuttled between their father and her and uh, diva strops that go on. And she's very difficult to work with, but the people that are affected by her adversely don't even get beyond 100, you would say, she basically outweigh the good outweighs the bad and therefore in those circumstances that's a narcissist that's needed it might be that from your perspective perhaps you see it in terms of 
if somebody's doing bad, that that negates any good that they would could ever do. No, not necessarily. Oh. I mean, it's like you know, like if I re refer back to the situation that first brought me into connection with you, in that sort of I use the word guru. He never called himself a guru. I'm just using that word to sort of describe the dynamic of weight, the position he held in this community. But he was like a teacher, and even though I experienced personally abuse from him, and I know there were other women and other people in that community that did. In the most part, he was doing something, again, quite maverick and risk-taking with the work that he was doing. And actually, he was kind of brilliant. Like, I can't take that away from him with what he was doing. And a lot of people gained a hell of a lot of benefit from working with him. And so it's that thing, and that's why people don't believe you, and that's why people find it hard to understand this kind of, this dualism within this narcissistic um, world that we live in. It's like, you know, people can be doing incredible good and then, as you say, there's the small handful of people around them that are experiencing the abuse. Um, I don't quite know where I'm going with this, but it's that thing of going, I don't know, like, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that, but it was okay. sort of... Well, again, there are further areas. Uh, we've, we've obviously talked about uh, narcissists that uh, provide on a grand scale. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the titans of industry and the actors and the authors and the artists and the sports stars. Yeah. But then there's also amongst my kind, we invariably do the jobs that often other people will not. And again, I'm not saying that it's wholly yeah. the preserve of us, but it tends to be the case that that belief in superiority, whether real or imagined, and the need for the admiration and often a belief in being invulnerable and basically uh, going where angels fear to tread and in it for the glory. Also, the, you know, rescuing the child from the burning building and the praise and admiration that comes with it, uh, sailing across the sea into unknown char uncharted territories and finding new worlds and bringing back exciting spices and chocolate and tobacco and gold and, oh dear, some poor tribesmen, well, they've been obliterated, too bad, should have learned to fight, but that's tough titty. But the point is that we also might influence people on a smaller scale in terms of through law enforcement, fire and rescue, first responders. But again, those individuals behind the scenes, there's an abused partner, there's uh, neglected children. So that individual, I would still say that society needs those people and that the price that comes with it is one that society has to pay. I, I would say that I agree with you, HG. I mean, I, I think I'm just in a place of going, I think... Uh, Need is, is an interesting word, isn't it? Like, do we what do we really need in, in any in any sort of you know the world is as it is, isn't it? And what's in it is what is what is in it. And it's like, how do we sort of navigate and live with the world as it is? And what can we do with it? You know, in terms of our own, oh, we can only ever take responsibility for ourselves. And um, and I've just kind of reached this point where at one point I used to be really kind of narc bashing, and I used to kind of want to bang on about it all the time. And my friends would be saying, "Oh, you're always going on about narcissists and stuff." I just think it's like once you understand this stuff it's like it's the key that unlocks everything and I and I think we need everything we need all of everything to just keep things moving forwards in a way which um in the way in which life just unfolds naturally um what about the proposition of suggesting that narcissists are needed to demonstrate to you uh, as an empath that there are going to be people who are superior to you and you should understand that and deal with it <laughs> uh, well I don't I don't believe that that's what I'm saying it's like I don't have to take on the narcissistic perspective do you know what I mean I can sort of see it and observe it and go okay I mean where it where it gets in interesting and difficult is like you know sort of uh, I don't know it's like there there is like I believe a push at the moment there, there are like elites within our world that want to kind of push forward a, a, a top-down hierarchy I mean it's all it's already there it's, it's always been there mm -hmm. and you know, people are being exploited and it, and they always have been, you know, that's, that's a narcissistic and that is something which I have a real problem with. But again, it's like, I can't save the world. I can't save anyone else. All I can do is take responsibility for my own self and how I show up within this, this world that we live in, this narcissistic framework that we live in. Mm -hmm. and I've learned through all these experiences of interactions and in some cases abuse from narcissists is to just take radical responsibility for my own life and that I don't have to hand my power away to anything on the outside or get the authority from anything on the outside to tell me who or give me permission for who or what I am. It's like, that's what I've learned from this. And I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I've realized that. 
we have we have created a society where there is all this learned helplessness where everyone is dependent on everything on the outside to just basically survive we don't even know how to grow our own food anymore we we're dependent on everything and it's this system that's been created that keeps us in this place of learned helplessness and again that's to me that's just a massive narcissistic frame and tool you know um, a framework that has been created around society to keep us all down essentially do you know what i mean it's like doesn't that have to be somebody that rules i don't know i don't know what the solution is all I know is that if everyone takes responsibility, a bit more responsibility for their own life, for their own health, for their, instead of just, you know, assuming everything's going to be taken care of for them, look at how addicted we all are to our mobile phones and to our screens. And, you know, we just don't really know how to do anything for ourselves anymore. And that, I believe, is a, is a tool that has been, you know, put on society to keep us down. You know, like we don't realize our own we don't realize what we're capable of because we've just handed it all out to someone else to sort out for us. You know, we go to the doctor to tell us about our health. We never, hardly anyone really takes full responsibility for their own health, for instance. These are all the things that I've learned, I guess, as a consequence of experiencing narcissistic abuse. Where do I hand my power out to something on the outside to dictate to me who or what I am and how I should be behaving? Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's like, I don't believe anyone is either inferior or superior to me. I believe we're all just one doing our thing and we all have the capacity to show up once we realize that in our in our full embodied empowerment. You're, um, just, a, you're just a hippie really, aren't you? And you're gonna- I'm a bit of a hippie HD. <laughs> after you finish talking, you're gonna have a big toke on a huge blunt and contemplate. Yeah. I don't do that, but I, I, I'm not going to lie. I have, uh, I do enjoy the old psychedelics here and there, and I think they are an amazing um, resource that you know, as mm. uh, as as human beings, we should be allowed, not allowed. You know, like again, it's that thing of like the the society that we live in deems certain things to be good for us and bad for us, and if we just mm. listen to all that, we're missing out on a lot of really amazing stuff. It's like we need to go and explore for ourselves these things. Just sort of touching on that, it occurred to me yeah. that I've spoken to other empathic individuals. Uh, they've often contemplated this idea of balance, yeah. the idea that there has to be a balance in the world. Um, and so therefore, that would suggest that would you not need narcissists to balance the empaths? Yes, that's what I mean. I, I think I think everything is always like trying to stay in a, in a state of balance. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got. I, I, I sort of I'm reluctant to use the words like the light and the dark because I don't. I want to take it out of the realms of good and evil. I think things just are as they are, and everything is always kind of yeah working its way to an, an equilibrium. So that's why the the narcissism or the darker side of things it does push things forward, and then the empathic side has to step up in order to kind of to meet it, if you see what I mean. And it keeps having to kind of balance itself out all the time. It just moves things forward. I guess, if I'm gonna go sound like a total hippie, it's for the evolution of consciousness. So. Okay. There we are. Yeah. Okay, well then, we've kicked around various ideas about do we need narcissism? It seems to me in summary, that the prevailing answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, there may be some caveats with it. From my perspective, I see it as a, a relatively simple equation that there are narcissists that bring uh, a huge amount to the world, uh, notwithstanding the abuses that come with that, and therefore uh, the way that we lead, the way that we develop things, the way that we entertain, the way that we uh, shape the world is something that the world needs, notwithstanding the cost that's associated with it. Those that are, don't actually contribute anything to the human condition, etc., one would say you don't need those individuals. So it's a matter of examining in each individual case what is it that's created and what comes with it as opposed to applying a general rule but uh, it fair to say in conclusion the overall view is the world does need narcissists yes i i agree with you hg i agree with you can i just ask you a question before we finish off of course uh, it's about labeling using the label narcissists uh, yeah. something which has leveled at me a lot is that i use this word this label and it's not okay for me to use it it's, it's not fair i'm and what do you think about this? Because I think it, we need to use the, we need to use words accurately to describe what something is. But yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> although the term narcissist is stigmatic, it is a term that's used, and one ought not to shy away from describing something as what it is. So rather than saying, "Oh, this is a tra trauma-based victim," no, 
if you describe someone as a narcissist, of course, many people don't fully understand what that means, which is why so much more education of the type that I'm providing is required. Yeah. But the, those that say, oh, I don't like to use labels. Well, I would suggest then that your life is very difficult because nobody must ever understand what it is that you're referring to, because everything has to have a label in order for you to describe what it is that you want. Uh, what, what would you like on your toast? Um, um, a, a fruit based <laughs> jelly kind of, oh, you mean jam? Why didn't you just say jam rather than be rambling on? So labels serve a purpose. I know there are those which, of course, say, yes, it stigmatizes people and so forth. But you're going to have to have them in order to understand what it is that you're talking about and what you're describing. I mean, it helps with accuracy. Yeah. And of course, the, the, and this leads into a completely separate debate, which I don't want to go into any great detail because it's so significant. But the fact is, is that people are trying to tamper with labels these days and yeah. call things that, that they are not. And that is utterly preposterous. Uh, the fact is, you've got cock and balls, you're a man. Just because you decide that you want to describe yourself as a woman, no, you're not. You're, you're not female. You are male. So you, you can describe yourself as whatever you want to be, but don't expect everybody else to do because you're still a dude with a beard wearing a dress. So. I'm with the HG. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There we are. I don't think I need to say any more about that, but it does go back to the point that you say about labels. And I think the term narcissist is one which exists. Um, not enough people understand what that actually means, and yeah. therefore it's important for more uh, education and understanding to be provided about that. Because as I mentioned before, Sam, many people think that the term narcissist just means, you know, somebody who's in love with themselves and, you know, is up themselves and is, you know, a boaster and a show off and so forth. And as you know, both from personal experience and the work that you've embraced, it means so much more than that. And um, the fact is that if some, the only issue is of course like certain words it can get bandied around and used when it's not applicable as well which goes back to the point about education that there's too often people will um basically use the term narcissist for somebody who didn't give them you didn't give you your own way so you turn around and label them a narcissist and as we know that's preposterous that is not what a narcissist is it's so. so frustrating. I mean, I get so frustrated with it. People think I'm demonizing because I talk about this, you know, I have a YouTube channel and I talk a little bit about this and how we can this. Is, so I guess I would say we need narcissists, but not for the same reason necessarily that you do. But it's for me, it's more about how, you know, the, the, the whole element of narcissism does drive things forward in the state of like it up it's like for the evolution of consciousness it's helped me to evolve my own consciousness and i believe that as a as a collective it can help humanity evolve its consciousness because we have to take back responsibility for our lives we've we've kind of got into this almost like coercive control um relationship with the society that we live in you know where we are controlled through our learned helplessness so you know it's like that's why i think narcissism can drive things forward it helps humanity to keep evolving and growing so mm -hmm. but it's yeah there we are. Well, yeah. the, the, the mug is drained of royal <laughs> blend. It is empty. And uh, there we are. Thank you very much, Sam, for joining me. Another interesting discussion. For those of you listening, what are your views? Do you think that we need narcissists? Do you think we need them under any circumstances? Do you think there are caveats associated with it? Do you think that narcissists should be wiped from the face of the earth and never be seen again as a consequence of the harm that we cause? Let Sam and I know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us and you will be able to hear more if we further debate next month as we move on to a, another topic. So it's goodbye from me, HG, and... It's goodbye from me, Sam. <laughs> brilliant. Two Ronnie's style nailed it. Absolutely <laughs> on point there. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, HG.